Hey everybody, I have a word for you today. This is a quick word I want to release over you and I want to give you some pointers and keys for this season, what I believe that God is saying and doing. Uh, I, I just have a heart to see people navigate seasons well, to navigate through, the, you know, sometimes these seasons that we go through, we don't have the map for, we don't have all the tools, we, we, we don't have everything in place to say, this is how you get from A to B. If life were like you know, a GPS that you could simply plug in your coordinates and then you begin to just walk in that direction, it'd be a lot easier, but we don't have that. Good to see you, Sam, good to see you guys. And but we, we don't have that. But I believe the prophetic, um, the prophetic call and gifting is a powerful tool that we all have, all of us, regardless of what your, your office is, that you can all prophesy, you can all hear from God, and we can all tap into that revelation, what God's saying over our seasons. I want to give you something from my heart to yours today, what I believe that God's saying to all of us as a body of Christ. So I hope you guys are ready. If you want to share this, please do. I want to give you some practical stuff today, give you a very simple word. Um, first, I just want to share, if you've seen a word that I released on Sunday night, it was a word, good to see you Kelly, it was a word I released um, about a tsunami is coming and I was at church on Sunday night and for those who haven't read the word, um, it was basically about how we're in a season right now, um, um, how I believe that we're, we're, we're coming into a powerful move of God and if anyone... You know, you can, you know, you're in a prophetic season. You know, you're in a season of harvest when things are shifting and changing. And this is the scripture that, that comes to me all the time. I haven't got the um, the, the actual scripture, but it's it says that where the increase comes by, um, an ox brings increase. So basically, there's there's the mess of a season uh, is is what produces increase, and you can't get increase except by the mess. And what we're looking at right now looks very messy and many people are going, I'm really, like I thought last season was difficult, but this season right now even feels even more difficult because I feel like I'm surrounded by so much mess and so much, so many things going on around me. All these things point to the fact that we're in a season of harvest, that God is bringing increase into our lives and He doesn't always pay as much attention to, to the, the, the things around us, the comforts, because He's wanting to break us out of our comforts. Sometimes... It's our comforts that actually hold us back and keep us in that place that God wants us to move from. So he'll confront our comforts to be able to move us into some of those places that we need to see increase. Okay, so with that in mind, um, on Sunday night, I had this, um, oh, this such a powerful vision. I was just so wrecked in his presence and I saw this tsunami. Um, well, actually, at first I didn't see the tsunami. I saw... I saw a, 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 a beach and I saw this water receding and heading out really quickly, like quite rapidly. And uh, I could see all the shells and, and all the different seaweed and stuff that was being exposed as the water was rushing out. And the wind began howling around me and I could see in the horizon a body of water rising up and into this, it was, it was cresting and it was about to crash. And I said, Lord, what is happening? He said, this is a season of foundations being reset. This is a season of me exposing the enemy's hand. And this is a season of preparing my people to be able to see the increase that they're being praying for. But what precedes, what precedes um, that move of, the, move of the spirit, what precedes a breakthrough sometimes looks like a recession in many areas of our life. What, what, what looks like what we're, when we're praying for increase, suddenly we're looking at things closing up and doors closing and dreams changing. Changing, things shifting around us and we're saying what is going on but if you have if you have your eyes um, fixed on the horizon you will see the tsunami is coming and I simply want to release a word to you today that we need to see differently that we need to look differently in this season I'm releasing a word for 2019 that I can't share about just yet but I believe it's going to really help people I want to give people some tools man I just want to see people come into the breakthrough I want to see you and I really understand the season we're in is not a season of going backwards this is the opportunity and this is the moment that we've all been waiting for and we've been craving for this is that moment right now okay so with that in mind I want to share this this um, I want to share the rest of this now with you I want to you can go read that word about the tsunami is coming on my page but I just want to share this word with you today because it is so simple yet I know it's the heart of the father I woke up this morning and um I've had something just kind of just stirring in my spirit the last few days and I hope I don't get overly emotional releasing this word but I feel so strongly just the heart of the father of the people right now it's like he's just saying 
Oh, will, 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 you understand, will you understand the timings and the season? I believe that there is even a grace, even over this broadcast right now. Lord, I thank you, Father, for there is an impartation of grace and revelation for people to, to get understanding, to know what you're speaking and saying and what you're doing, that it's not just a, a prophetic word that they go and that makes them feel good for a day, God. But, Father, that they would receive the impartation of this revelation that you're giving them in this hour to be able to know and perceive the seasons, Father. I believe it's even an hour for the, for the prophetic movement, Father, Father, for the Issachar anointing to come upon them. Father, that we're going to deliver keys. We're going to deliver those things that need to be released in this season for the body of Christ to pick up. This is not a season, Lord God, of their hands being emptied. It's a season of new keys being given, new re- revelation being, being handed to them. Father, I see that baton passing. Oh, wow, Holy Spirit. Wow, just seeing something right now in the spirit. I just feel like there is something about the mothers and the fathers and the sons and the daughters in this season. I just keep seeing the batons being handed back and forth and back and forth. And there is a stirring up of the generations. There is a a uniting of the generations. And there is a a passing back and forth of the batons that shows me the cross-pollination in the spirit of the generations. That the strengths, the strengths of the revelation they carry will be passed back and forth to be able to sharpen iron. Lord God, I thank you, Father, for what you're showing me right now. That we're moving in this is not a season of backing off Father. the season of, of grabbing that baton and bringing it into the new season. God, I thank you, Father, right now, that every person watching this, Holy Spirit, that you would come. Holy Spirit, that you would come in power. There'll be a fire released over them right now in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, wow. Just feel his presence just for a moment right now to say, God, do what you want to do in me in this season. Just do this right now. Holy Spirit, do what you want to do in me in this season. I let go. I let go. I let go in Jesus' mighty name. And so um, this morning I, I kept hearing the Lord say to me, the, uh, I, I, I'm not saying the key, a key for this season is in Mark 6. And I said, what part of Mark 6? Because the Lord and I have this kind of thing where he, he'll, he'll show me a scripture. And so I'm looking for a scripture, you know, Mark 6, 18. Or, no, 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 the, the whole chapter. And I went, okay. So I began looking it up and I want to give you the, the points that comes out of Mark 6, I believe is key for this season. And so Mark 6, it starts off um, where Jesus comes into Nazareth, the place that he was, the place that he, um, that he was, that he, that he was brought up. And this is what it says. Afterward, Jesus went to Capernaum, went to Nazareth, his hometown, and then went and taught in the synagogue. I'm going to paraphrase this, okay? Because I feel like there is, we just, I, need, I need to get to the prophetic, just the parts the Holy Spirit wants to be in. And okay, so this is the thing. They, he began teaching them, and they said, what incredible wisdom has been given to him. Where did he receive such profound insights and what mighty miracles flow from his hands? Isn't this Mary's son, the carpenter, the brother of Jacob, Joseph, Judah, and Simon? And don't his sisters all live here in Nazareth? And they took offense at him. And then it goes on and Jesus says, a prophet is treated with honor everywhere except in his home town. And then it went on to say that Jesus was amazed at the depth of their unbelief. And then Jesus went into the different villages and taught the people. And what the Lord said to me is the key in, in, in this particular part is that in a new season, you can partner with that Nazareth thing that says, God, are you really, are you really the one who can bring change to my life? There is unbelief that can try to come in that says, God, you haven't given me everything I need to be able to run my race. And you begin disqualifying yourself and not believing that God's what he's placed inside of you. Firstly, you don't believe him. There is a temptation to not believe him. And there's a temptation not to believe that what he's put inside you is enough and that you're even qualified to do it. And I thought the Lord said to me that we need to drop that mindset. That this is a season that we can't live in that way of doubting God. This is a season. This is going to be the thread throughout this word is faith. You need to trust him and you need to have faith that what he's put inside you is is enough to be able to bring you into this into this next season. I want to move on. The next part of the of the of the chapter speaks about how Jesus sends out the 12 disciples, um, the, the 12 apostles. And um, this, the one part that comes out of here is where Jesus says, I, I don't feel like this whole part is key to this. But Jesus gives them a commission. He says, go, you know. Uh, anoint people with oil, you know, cast out the devils, all these kinds of stuff. But he says here, it says, um, 
if they don't receive you, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. And highlight it jumped off the page to me. I said, Holy Spirit, what are you saying? He said, I need my people to shake off the dust of the past season. I need them to shake off the dust of where they were not accepted and when they were rejected. I need them to release. I need them to shake off the dust finally once and for all. And I just saw it in the spirit just as people begin to dust off their feet. It was almost like God was coming. It was like that moment where he was he was washing his disciples' feet. And they were like, we can't, we can't wash your feet he's like if you can't let me wash your feet then you're not getting this whole thing you're not getting this whole thing if you cannot let me wash your feet and i feel like god is washing the feet of people right now he's been washing people's feet he's preparing them he's been wanting to lead them into a new season he's saying you need to shake off the dust and i'm going to wash your feet and i feel like so i just feel it right now in the spirit so much dishonor is breaking off people right now we're in the past season that the rejection that the dishonor was so intense i keep hearing betrayal i even keep seeing it now in marriage as those betrayal in different areas. I feel like God's healing them right now. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Holy Spirit, I thank you for healing right now in your presence. Just healing right now in your presence, God. Okay, moving on, moving on. Just grab whatever Holy Spirit's saying to you right now. If you need to park, if you need to kind of park yourself in that moment, you do that while I speak through this word. Come back to it later on. Okay, the next part is so key. It just, this chapter jumps all around, but it's so key to what this word is that God's saying to me today and to us. And it says that King Herod heard about Jesus and they were like, who is this guy? They thought, you know, it is, how's this happening? We've got John down in the, down in the prison. Long story short, um, they beheaded John. Okay, they beheaded John. And it is so key to this story here because... Jesus spoke something about John. He said to them in Matthew, I think it's 13, he said that John was the greatest of the Old Testament prophets. But then in the same sentence, he says, but even you, even the least of you are greater than he, because we'd stepped into a new era. Wow. Into a new covenant. We're entering into a new covenant at that time. And that season had to have its head removed. And I said, Lord, what are you showing me through this? And God said to me that when he said to me, when Jesus came, it was so difficult for them to understand the new because the, 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 it was ingrained into them, just like it was for the Israelites crossing into the promised land that Joshua had to circumcise them because they were still thinking like Egypt and in slavery. And I believe right now that God's saying that you will not get this new wave. You will not get the fresh thing you're pouring out if you are still thinking like the old season. And I heard the Lord say to me, you're going to have to lose your head to move ahead. And so many people, we think out salvation and we we process we cognitively process um you know our righteousness and our theology and i'm tired of seeing just this 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 head approach to the kingdom when god said it's a place of the heart yes it's the, it's the head yes our thoughts our, our, our emotions and all that come into play when it's submitted to the spirit but it is not what leads us it is our spirit man that leads us and so many people have been disqualifying and sabotaging themselves from moving into a new season because they've been trying to think their way into something that they have to only move in from the heart, from the, from, the, from the spirit, moving in a place of simple obedience, saying, God, I don't have all my ducks in a row up here. I, can't, I haven't got it all figured out how you're doing it up there. I'm trying to plan the best I can, but I know that I can't figure it all out. So it's on you, God. I'm going to cut, I'm going to lose my head right now. And I'm going to allow my spirit man to lead me into a season that is new and unknown. Do you, are you catching me right now? Are you getting this? Because this is, this is very key. This is significant for you right now that you need to move into the new season. I'm, just, I'm feeling the burn of the Holy Spirit on my chest right now because he's just, wow, wow, God, just brand hearts, God. Just brand hearts right now, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name. Wow. All right, next story. Jesus multiplies food to the 5,000. I don't want to read the whole thing here. Late that afternoon, his disciples said, it's getting really late. We're here in this remote place with nothing to eat. You should send the crowds away so they can go to the surrounding villages and buy food. And he answered them, you give them something to eat. Are you sure, they replied, you really want us to go and buy them supper because they're thinking with their heads. And, that, and they said, it will cost a small fortune to feed all these thousands of hungry people. 
And then Jesus said, how many loaves of bread do you have? And we know what happens. And Jesus multiplied it. See, this is a thing. Are you sure you really want us to go and buy them supper? Supper? Because they were thinking logistically. They were thinking logically instead of looking through the eyes of the Spirit. But see, this is, this, is, this, is the, this is the unusual demand of being a son or daughter of God. God will not ask you to do things that are logically possible. He will not ask you to do things that, that are even logistically possible. He will ask you to do things that you cannot do without the Spirit of God. And so many of us have settled and we've reduced the kingdom life to what is manageable and what, is, what can be what can be um, performed and orchestrated by man. We've dumbed the kingdom down to a place of what is logically possible rather than living in the place of extraordinary faith and impossibility. And I believe that God is raising people's eyes again to live in that place of extraordinary faith that bypasses the mind and that releases them to see extraordinary exploits for the kingdom of God. Okay, so that's all I'm going to share on that. But on the, on, on the last story of this job, I'm not going to read, it's where Jesus walks on water. And as everyone had their meal, Jesus instructed his disciples to get in the boat. As the night fell, the boat was in the middle of the lake and Jesus was alone on the land. The wind was against the disciples and he could see that they were straining on the oars, trying to make headway. When it was almost morning, Jesus came to them walking on the surface of the water and he started to pass by them. When he saw them walking on the waves, when they saw them, they thought that he was a ghost and screamed out in terror. But he said to them once, don't heal to fear, have courage, it's me. I am. And he's saying to you today that this is a season of walking on the water. And many of you have been in preparation for this hour. And he's saying to you, do not yield to fear in this season. Have courage because it is me with you. I am. And I just feel so strong that many of you have been crying and praying, God, I need breakthrough in my life. I can't keep doing things the way I've been doing them. But he's saying, I want you to step out of your comforts. I want you to step into this place that I'm going to meet you in and the wind will be howling around you. Yes, you, you'll, you'll, have the, you'll have the opportunity to shriek in terror because this is new for you, but I am, but I am with you and I'm going to be there with you and I'll never leave you and I'll forsake you, but you're going to have to lose your head for a minute or just like in the, other, in the other story when Jesus walked on the water and Peter walked out, it's like when fear catches you for a moment, you begin to sink, but as we keep our eyes on Jesus, we begin to stay in that place of faith. We begin to stay in that place where things shift for us and we begin to, we begin to see the breakthrough of what happens when we yield to the spirit over what the mind is saying, over what logic is saying. Sometimes even, sometimes even what our Christian friends could be saying to us can be the wrong advice and we need to yield to the spirit in this hour to know what is right. Sometimes there are, even, there are people around you that are wiser and they've been further down the road but, and, you're gonna, and you need to honor what they're saying but you don't need to, you have to listen to the Holy Spirit for yourself because sometimes he's going to encourage you to step out into what looks foolish or risky to reap the results, the fruit on the new season that is opened up for you. This is an hour of multiplication. This is an hour of the more, but we're not going to experience it unless we step out in faith, lose our head, trust the spirit of God, yield to it, yield to the season, yield to the process, yield to the unknown. You hear what I'm saying? Wow, Holy Spirit. The last, the last story of this chapter, it's simply where Jesus got out of the boat. He got out of the boat, see? And he went, he went around the region saying, bring out the sick. Even those too sick to walk and bring them on mats. Wherever he went in the countryside, they placed the sick on mats in the streets and public places and begged him saying, just let us touch the tassel of your prayer shawl. And all who touched him were instantly healed. I said, God, what is the significance of that? Because you said all of chapter six, all of it. And he said to me, it is, the, it, is, it is the step of faith. It is the act of faith 
to touch something and believe, to simply touch the. And I felt him say that to me, it is the, it is the mark of intimacy and it is the, it is the mark of trust and, and friendship to simply say, God, I trust you. It's like grabbing that shawl, God, I trust you. I trust you in this season, God. I know you are the healer. I know you are the provider. I know you are the source and nothing else. And in this season, I'm going to grab hold of your shawl. I'm going to grab hold of your garment and I'm going to hold on for dear life because I know in that place you begin to work things out for my good. I don't have to try to do things in my own strength anymore. God, I just yield to you. And I believe he's asking us simply to yield to him today. I believe he's simply, you know, maybe you've come on this broadcast and you're feeling the weight and the burdens. I'm, I'm feeling it right now. He's just saying, do you trust me? Grab, grab the hem of my garment right now. Grab my shawl. Let me be your source. Stop trying to work it and figure it all out. And this is what I kept hearing the Holy Spirit say as I was just reading, but um, as I was writing this out was, the rudder has changed course and we're gonna need to go with the Spirit to know where it's leading. And I want to give you a few tools for this season right now. Wow, Holy Spirit. I want to pray for you. Wow, wow, Holy Spirit. <sighs> Can you do me a favor? Somebody in your life today that you know needs this message, tag them into this or share it on their page or share it on your page, do whatever. Just release this to them. Just, um, it's going to encourage them that they're on the right track that they just need to keep yielding to the Spirit. Just do that right now if you feel to. So I want to give you these tools. Number one, these, <laughs> these are things I use. These are things Christy and I use, okay? So um, it's not extensive, it's just a few things, but I know it's going to bless you. Number one, don't freak out when the path changes. Don't freak out when things look different. Don't freak out when the options in front of you isn't what you expected. This is the thing. He provides, the, he provides that seed in you, which is that seed of destiny, the seeds, and then he waters it. But sometimes what it produces will look different to what we expected it to be, but it's going to be greater than what you felt. It's going to be greater than what you thought, okay? Number two, don't fight the foundation correction. Um, you know, I feel like so many families right now are going through foundation correction. God is really setting foundations right. Ministries, churches, and it's a good thing. It's the fire. It's the refiner's fire. It's the, but it's not. It's 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 not how I maybe grew up thinking the fire was. It's the tender, the tenderness of the Lord to to fill the cracks and to 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 smooth over the rough areas and to tenderly bring us into a place of health. It's 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 beautiful. It's not scary. It's his heart. It's the Father wanting to lavish his love on us, right? And it's beautiful. I just want to encourage you, don't fight the foundation correction. It's him. He's just wanting to, you know, like I said, you know, when I saw that tsunami, and when I saw the waters receding, it was exposing. It was exposing all these things. But it was the hand of the enemy that he was mainly exposing. The enemy has been trying to graft himself into those weak areas of your life. And God's saying, I'm exposing the enemy. I am exposing the snake and it's going to run out of your territory. It will run out of your house. It will not come back anymore. And I'm just, I just felt Holy, just Holy Spirit say right now, there are people that have dreams about snakes even in this season. Yeah, and it's going to be a confirmation to you that God's saying, I'm bringing a ridiculous recompense and uh, exposing those things that have come against you. The warfare, even the, the, the chatter and the words coming against you. The voices of accusation will be broken off you right now in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Father, for justice over homes, justice over those that words have been spoken over them, witchcraft and words of control and manipulation and abuse. Father, I break it in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Number three, number three, take your hand hands off the wheel. Make it easier on yourself, guys. Yield. You can't orchestrate this one. You can only yield to it and say, yes, God, I, I, just, I trust you in the unknown, even though I don't know what it looks like, even though I, you know, and there are men out there, maybe mums out there, and you're like, but I need to know where my family is going. I hear there's someone out there saying, I need to know where to move to. I'm not sure who you are. You need to move locations. And you're saying, what's going on? Why do I need to move locations? I just don't know where to go. And God's saying, I'm going to give you that, but trust me. It's going to fall in your lap, that location. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, number Number four, don't settle for last season's fruit. There's going to be the, the option, the enemy will present an option for you to accept 
the position, the, the, I call it the, the nameplate of the last season. The, what you've already got, he'll, he'll, he'll extend an invitation for you to stay there in the next season when there's also an opportunity for you to step out into the unknown. I encourage you, step out into the unknown. Number five, keep submitting your mind, will, and emotions to the Holy Spirit in this season. Don't let them run the ship. Okay, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5 says, For although we live in the natural realm, we don't wage a military campaign employing human weapons, using manipulation to achieve our aims. Instead, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power to effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. We can demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God and break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. We capture like prisoners of war every thought and insist that a bow in obedience to the anointed one. See, our mind and emotions is not an evil thing, but it, it has to be anointed. It needs to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit for it to work effectively. That's why I'm saying we need to lose our heads to move ahead. Because God's saying it needs to come under the Spirit's influence. Otherwise, it will be what tries to guide your ship. And what it will do, it will keep you in a holding pattern like it did for the Israelites for 40 years. And God's saying, no, I want you to enter now. I'm jealous for you to enter now. I want you to come into the promise now. So lose your head. Stop allowing your, your mind, will, and emotions to guide you. Feelings are okay when you feel stuff, but say, God, am I feeling something that is real and true right now? It reminds me of, of, uh, of the Hunger Games where, where, where Peter, how he's like, look, he kept looking at, he kept looking over at um, Katniss and he's like, is this true? He had to keep asking her, is this true? Is this truth? And she's like, yes, that's truth. And it's almost like we need to keep asking the Holy Spirit in our journey. My, my, we need to realize that our mind, will, and emotions aren't evil, but we need to keep saying, Holy Spirit, am I feeling what you've anointed my emotions to feel, or am I, do I need to submit this? And I just feel like he'll show you, he'll guide you. And so, Father, thank you, Lord God, that you're guiding and leading us in this season, Jesus' mighty name, by the Spirit, to see the, to see the fruit of the Spirit in Jesus' name. And number six, this is my favorite one, is dream with God again, people. Dream with God. Confront the survival mode that stagnates the dreamer inside you and truly dream and create with God again. The unknown isn't the time to fall asleep in the bunker of the boat when the storm's raging around you. It's time to step up into the mast and put your face into the wind and say, this is my territory. I can't see it because the fog is in front of me and the cloud and the storm. But I know that where I'm going is a new frontier and I'm a pioneer anointed mightily by God to be a son and daughter that takes the kingdom into places that it's never been before. And the gifts and callings upon my life will not return void, but it will accomplish what you've asked and called it to do. Father, I thank you. I trust you. And I'm going to step into my season. This is my now moment. This is my opportunity. And I'm choosing to see differently, God, so I can experience the fruit of what I see from heaven to earth. God, so I ask right now, Lord God, for there to be the adjustment of eyes, Father, that you wake up the spirit man of every single person watching this in Jesus' mighty name. That you'd stir up that, Father, that you'd fan into flame. Father, you'd fan into flame the gifts, the calling upon their life in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Lord God, that you're adjusting people to see how you see. And Lord God, that you are, that you are asking them to yield. And I just say, Holy Spirit, if that's, if that's something that's, that you really feel right now, say, Holy Spirit, I yield. Holy Spirit, I yield. Holy Spirit, I yield to you in Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, David, I just hear the Lord saying to you that I, I just saw you. It's like, David, you are a David, but I saw this armor being placed upon you. And I just really feel like the Lord's saying that he's putting armor on you in this season. He's preparing you. He's preparing you for um, authority. I keep seeing this mantle of authority being placed upon you. And you've been through a season where you've been complacent because you've just felt disqualified. And I hear the Lord saying this new armor that's upon you is going to lead your family into new waters. And you're going to carry that mantle again. And you're going to stand up as the voice in your home that leads your home and your marriage and children. And I just rebuke where the enemies come against you. And where you've been discouraged with your job and your finances and you've just been so just weighed down. I just 
just, I just declare over you, I prophesy that this is your season in Jesus' mighty name. I see the oil being poured over your head. He's anointing you fresh with oil. And there's an Elise on here right now. And the Lord said the hard season you've waged and you've walked through is coming to an end. I just see that there is, uh, it's like God is really just um, doing something with your mind right now. He's pouring, he's just someone like, I just see like, I just see the Lord just, um, he's just anointing your mind right now. And he's just, he's, he's, he's calling to its place of, of health again, where you've seen such a, 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 a battle waged against your mind. And I just feel like the Lord say that, uh, wow, he's breaking the fear off you from your family. And I hear the Lord say that you have a glorious future. You have a glorious future. And the enemy's really tried to lie about your future. Wow, I'm going to command those situations to bow to the name of Jesus right now. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Holy Spirit, I thank you right now, God. I thank you right now. Angie Glover, I'm just seeing your name right now. And I just, I just saw, I just saw, um, I kept saying the, Lord, the words, beautiful princess. And I feel like the Lord is saying over you. I just see like flowers all around you. And, and the Lord is just, um, there's, there's the sweetness of this season and the fragrance of his presence that is coming upon you in this season. This, the fragrance of his presence is coming over you in this season where he birthed something new in you in the secret place. And the Lord's saying, but I want that to come outside of your bedroom. It can't just be contained anymore because that beautiful, that beautiful fragrance that's upon you is, is being made for the public place in this season. And you'll step into that. So I bless that over you right now in Jesus' mighty name, Holy Spirit. Wow, Kathy Pelton, I need to prophesy over you. Because I keep seeing, I, for the last week and a half, I keep seeing 2.0, 2.0 of, 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 a, of a prophetic company. A 2.0 of a prophetic company. And the Lord would say over you, that the Lord would say over you that this will be the season of so much joy. I just, I just see you and your husband on your knees and you've spent a season on your knees. But the Lord would say this will be the season of standing tall. I see a flag in your hand. I'm not sure, but... Um, it's, it's, I just keep, you see you wave a flag in the air. Wow, Holy Spirit says it's a territorial, it's a, it's a declaration of a territorial assignment to take the land, um, to take the land. I, I, I believe you're from Oregon. So I thank you, Father, for a, a territorial, that anointing to raise up the prophets and the prophetic voices and those that can hear you. I feel the Lord say that you're going to, you're going to really go into different streams that have seen the prophetic as a bad word and as a weird, weird kind of spooky thing. And you're going to make it so simple. And you're going to raise up, you're going to raise up people to simply hear God and be able to release his heart to the world. And the people are going to know the Father through your ministry. And I thank you, Father, for their children knowing you deeply and intimately in this hour in Jesus' mighty name. Wow, wow. And I, it's funny, I keep seeing a wave, that wave. As, as I was just prophesying, I keep seeing that wave. And it's like, I see that, I see it, look, this wave has been a protection around you. So I see like a protection around you. I'm not sure protecting you from what, but I see like there's been a real, God's been really protecting you. And there's been certain doors that haven't opened because it's a protection. It's almost like God really values the purity you both carry and he's been protecting you from, from stepping into something you shouldn't. So Father, I thank you, Lord, right now. Uh, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for Kelly Marie, God. I thank you, Father, that this is this is a season for her, Lord God, to, wow, I hear the Lord say the infrastructure needs to be set, but it's going to be Holy Spirit infrastructure. You can't buy a book on how to do this. It's going to be Holy Spirit inspired infrastructure to build what is inside your heart. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, right now for the infrastructure of that movement, of that movement that she sees in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. I just, I just got to say this as I end the broadcast, but I keep hearing the Lord say, prophesy restoration over them. So let's do this right now. If you've been through such a season of loss, I just declare restoration over you in Jesus' mighty name. Such a season of restoration, I declare in Jesus' name. You know that scripture in Isaiah that says, um, I forgot where it is now, one of my favorites though. I should know it. But it says um, that every, every warrior's boots used in battle um, and, and I think it's like clothes, tunics dipped in blood will be as used as fuel for the fire. And I believe this is a season we're going to see those things 
that had come against us, the seasons of war and battle used as fuel for this move of God, this thing that God's doing in and through and around us. The Father, we say yes to the restoration. He's, there's also the scripture that says, we're a people pillaged and plundered, but who will be those who will cry out restore? We will cry out restore, God. And we just thank you, Father, as we move forward by faith, that we're gonna see the restoration, the restoration that you promised for us in Jesus' mighty name. Well, guys, thanks for joining me. Um, please share this with anyone you feel needs this. Um, go check out our website if you want to hear any more words. Our YouTube channel. Go check out our YouTube channel. It's just youtube.nate and Christy, and you'll be blessed on there. We put a lot of videos up on there that we don't on Facebook now. So go check them out, and you'll be really blessed. Christy's got some encouraging words and devotionals on there as well, as well as some worship videos on there too. So that's really cool. Bless you guys. We've got fourth season of Grow coming up in only a few weeks. We're releasing all the info to register soon. But bless you guys, and have an amazing day. Bye.